Hi everyone, Tony from Hack the Movies here, and today we're going to talk about the original Nightmare on Elm Street Ooh. and talk about how it changed slasher films and saved an entire film studio on today's Talking About Tapes. Talk, talking, talk, talking, talking about tapes. Thanks to Helix Sleep for sponsoring this video. Oh, oh no, I'm in the dream world. I was supposed to stay awake, but I guess I was so comfortable on my Helix Sleep mattress, I ended up dozing off. I've had my Helix Sleep mattress for months now, and I'm still loving it. I wake up feeling super refreshed and ready to face the day. Have you not heard of Helix Sleep? They make premium mattresses and bedding that are customized to fit your needs, and they ship directly to your door. I went to their website and took their sleep quiz. Afterwards, I was able to find the perfect mattress that fit my body type. And if you have a significant other, you can take the test together. I got the Midnight Lux mattress and I can't stress enough how great it is. Before this, I had some terrible mattress that hurt my back. The Midnight Lux offers so much comfort and support, my back feels better than ever. You get a 100 night sleep trial and a 10 year warranty. They even have financing options and flexible payment plans. And it'll show up to your door for free if you're in the US. It comes rolled up in a box and it's super easy to set up. Let's see how easy it is. Welcome to Nap City. Ah. Oh, gee. Oh. I have a new bed. I love my Helix and I think you would too. If you're looking for a new bed, check out Helix. Click the link below or go to helixsleep.com slash hack the movies for up to $200 off your Helix sleep mattress plus two free pillows. Oh no, I need to get out of here. I'm sure my cat will wake me up any second now unless she's also getting a great night's sleep on the same mattress. <gasps> and here I am in this nightmare world where I have to talk to women. Hello girls, how are you? What? No wonder you're single, <laughs> holy shit. Also what women, I'm discount Johnny Depp. <laughs> yeah, uh, Jessica's really proud of her Johnny Depp costume. <laughs> I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks dad for the shirt. My friends Andy and Vito went to his concert. Uh, Vito posted, it's like, dare me to scream free Amber or something like that. I don't know if he did. <laughs> anyway, <sighs> Nightmare on Elm Street by Wes Craven. Uh, a classic, a classic. Really put Wes Craven on the map. Now, he had uh, previous hits. Of course, he had The Last House on the Left. I've never seen it. I own two copies of the remake, and I've never watched it. I saw the end of it. Uh, a few weeks back, my sister had it on. I'm like, I've never watched the remake of huh. Last House on the Left. Um, the, I bring this up because apparently Wes Craven was bullied by a kid named Fred Krueger when he was a kid. And the, That's really funny. And the dad, the, the leader of the insane family in Last House on the Left, his name is Krug. Hmm. He's Krueger. So, I wonder how that kid feels knowing that he's, his name is... I remember hearing that kid. fact. I, I don't know if it's 100% true, but yeah, imagine... Don't bully people, guys. Uh, someone might name a famous film monster after you. <laughs> like a bad one, too. Yeah, I'm yeah. coming after you, bully name redacted. I don't, I don't want to say their name. <laughs> bully name redacted. I don't want to say it. Yeah. I'll name my bully Johanna from high school. I'm going to root for that slasher. <laughs> I'm going to name mine Antonio... Palooza. <laughs> Don't do my full name, <laughs> Jessica. Bleep that out. Bleep that out. Right, she's trying to fist bump you. <laughs> anyway. You can just cut that out. That was embarrassing. I thought, I thought, you, were, no, I thought you were pretending to hold a microphone to be like, yes, get him. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yes, he no, did. It works both ways. You fist bump the mic. Anyway, continue. He did Last House on the Left, which is a uh, very, very intense film. I don't know if you've ever seen the original. Mm -mm. It's it's rough. It's 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 rough to get through. Uh, it's good. Uh, then he also did The Hills Have Eyes, mm -hmm. the original. I've heard of that. Which is really good. I actually like the remake a little bit more. Yeah? But, yeah, but the original is really good, too. Um, yeah, and then he did Nightmare on Elm Street. Now, apparently, Ooh. he got the idea of this film because he heard about these kids in Thailand that were having, like, horrifying nightmares oh. and then dying shortly afterwards. 
And like the one kid like tried huh. to stay awake for like a week and then he fell asleep and died. And I guess this story like really stuck with Wes Craven. I remember looking into like that story a while back and I, I think it was drug related. But anyway, it was enough to stick with him because it's like, oh, what like what's the most horrifying thing? It's like something attacks you in your sleep and you can't get away from it. Um, Look, I've had a Freddy Krueger nightmare. He, made, he pushed me onto a bed of nails or glass and I felt it. But uh, I woke up and I was fine. And that was not the most horrifying nightmare I've ever had. Just what the fuck? <laughs> I don't know. He also threw me into a pool of chlorine and it stung. Why is he throwing you so I much? I don't know. He he's not stabbing you. He's just throwing you. I have never had a nightmare about Freddy Krueger. No, but he called me a bitch. So that's... that's, uh, that's uh, <laughs> that reminds me of... Uh, was it Rick and Morty? Yeah. <laughs> Aww, <laughs> scary. Bitch. Is it Scary Terry or something? Scary, yeah, scary Terry. Oh. Bitch. And he has a family. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's so good. So, <laughs> so everyone he tried to pitch this script to passed on it for three years. No one wanted to make this movie. And then he went to Rob Shea, who was the head of New Line Cinema, who was on the verge of bankruptcy. And they went, yeah, okay. And it saved them. It, it became, it, it New them. Line was known as the house that Freddie built. Because uh, it basically <laughs> saved that entire studio. And it's always been New Line mm -hmm. since then, or you know, New Line Warner Brothers. So yeah, yeah when, when you that's why his movie, you get a seizure because it's just like New Line. <laughs> that's why even early on, you were able to get nice big box sets of uh, Nightmare on Elm Street because unlike Halloween or Friday Thirteenth, they weren't like separated by different studios. So this this was like the most coveted uh, VHS box set for a long time. This is my second. Uh, I bought these individually, but I never had all of them. I was always missing four and seven, and a fan actually sent in four and seven for me to complete it. Uh -huh. But Kieran actually gave me his old box set. So I actually have the completed box set with the box that it comes in at home. Uh, yeah, so yeah, it saved New Line Cinemas. Um, you know, it's funny. I was looking at the credits and people who would be involved with the franchise, like directors from later films, worked on this film. The assistant production manager was Rachel Talley, who ended up doing Freddy's Dead. And what other film? Uh, the, um, uh, tank the, Girl. The, oh. Uh, did you forget <laughs> oh. about the Tank Girl episode? No, I remember. I worked on it. I just was just expecting another no. <laughs> Nightmare on Elm Street. That episode. I was going to say the 2010 Nightmare, no. which is terrible. That episode didn't do well. Go watch the Tank Girl episode. Go it's really it. good. It's fun. Uh, but Jack Shoulder is in the credits. And he ended up doing the second one, who we interviewed on the show for the Wishmaster 2 episode. He directed that. That was before I worked here. So That was before you yeah. worked here. Uh, yeah, and it is. And the episodes were shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's one of the uh, most famous slasher franchise. One of the big three. When was the first time you saw Nightmare on Elm Street? I was definitely older. I think like what Halloween, um, Jason and stuff like that. I saw when I was younger. I think it took me a while to actually sit. So I have to be like maybe like 12, 13 maybe. Oh, really? Yeah. Like I was definitely older. No. What did you What did you think when you first saw it? Huh. And then I went to bed. He didn't He didn't scare me. I liked it though. Yeah. When did you first see Friday? <laughs> when did you first see Friday the 13th? Um, last year. <laughs> Actually, Sean Cunningham gets a special thanks in this. The creator of Friday 13th. He actually directed like one scene in this. Um, when did you first see Nightmare on Elm Street? Also last year, but I technically watched it in focusing for the first time. That made no sense, but whatever. This weekend, because last time, the last year I saw it, I had a 103 de degree fever. That's when you want to watch this movie. Well, no, no the, wonder you're having nightmares. Like, <laughs> that wasn't what gave me. <laughs> I was, I'm like, I have to get through this movie because I have like that, like an OCD. I'm like, I, if I don't finish it, I'm not going to sleep. <laughs> That's what's not going to make me sleep, of course. But at one point I, I let my dog out and I collapsed on our kitchen floor. And I'm like, no, I have to finish Nightmare on Elm Street. And then I didn't go to work the next day because I was literally dying. What are you doing to her? I didn't do he, shit. He didn't, no, he didn't do anything. It was, it was my own fault. I mean, yeah, Shut it, up. it was, it was um, no, it's Freddy's fault. I so think Freddy. I think I might have actually seen Freddy's Dead first. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that's why that one has a special place in my heart, which most mm. people hate it. I think they hate it because it has a female director and they're all sexist. But I love the movie. Uh, no, how could they be sexist when you know it's like the one of the best female final girls? Like, well, she's not named Freddy's Dead. 
uh, just in general, I'm talking just Friday the 13th. There's always... I don't know. People hate Freddy's Dead, but I really like it. So I'm calling them sexist so they feel bad. <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah. And I eventually went back and watched the first Nightmare on Elm Street and I loved it. I thought it was really creepy. All, all the dream stuff. Although Freddy was never really my favorite out of the big slashers. He doesn't really have a yeah. personality in this one. Except he's just like kind of there. Like, yeah. Bitch. However, <laughs> in recent years... Like, I, like Halloween was usually my favorite franchise and then Friday the 13th. But like, as I watched like all these franchises back to back uh, a few years ago, Nightmare is the one that is the most consistent of the big three yeah. when it comes to being like, I don't really like four and five, but there's enough interesting things in them. And yeah, I, I kind of like all of them to varying degrees. Three is the best one, in my opinion. Three, three is the best one? Three, Dream Warriors. Like no, two, two is the best one. Freddy's Revenge. Uh, to be honest, I don't remember two. That's the gay one. And it's always been my favorite. And I love that it's now like a... I have a whole like mini review of it on this channel. Mm, you would like the gay one, wouldn't you? <laughs> it's really good. Watch my little mini review of it. And I also reviewed the documentary about it. Because everyone always hated it because it was the gay one. And I'm like... Oh, that's a silly And I'm like... And I'm just like... Yeah, but it makes me like it more. Yeah. <laughs> but I'm just like... No, but it's a good movie. I don't care that it's gay. Well, I, just, <laughs> I just like the third one because you get that line. It's prime time. Well, welcome on the prime time. <laughs> that that was pretty good. Um, but yeah, yeah. Freddy was never really my favorite, never really my favorite series. But now that I'm older, uh, yeah, it's probably the technically the best of these big franchises. Chucky's good too, I guess. Um, I'm going to go with Chucky. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I still like Friday the 13th. And I actually really like Freddy. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is, well, Halloween's over and Friday 13th is far away, so we got to do another big slasher. Mm. And I recently watched on Tubi all of Freddy's Nightmares, the TV show he had that ran for two seasons. The TV show? Yes, and it's great. Uh, you've got early appearances from Brad Pitt and uh, Mariska Hardigay uh, and a bunch of other big like celebrities. Is Robert England in it? Or? Yeah, he's the host. Oh. Brad Pitt oh, almost had uh, Johnny Depp's role in this. Oh, really? That's funny. He tried out for it, yeah. That's funny. There's a lot of people. Uh, the girl, um, oh my God, her name. Um, Heather... Langan Camp. Yeah. Um, Courtney Cox and other people were trying out for that role. Oh. Isn't that weird? I found that out and I was like, huh. Courtney Cox would find stardom when she was in the Masters of the Universe movie and that one Bruce Springsteen video. With his pink Corvette. <laughs> Friends <laughs> scream. <laughs> she, that was later. <laughs> Thank God Johnny Depp was in this because then I wouldn't be able to dress up that day. Like, yeah, Brad so Pitt, how would I dress up as Brad Pitt? Jess just wants to be... Uh, I mean, technically the same. <laughs> I, I, I know it. When I looked at myself, I'm like, I'm Rango. It's fine. <laughs> so let's get into this film. Good movie. Uh, and we'll talk about how it, how it kind of changed things. So yeah, it starts off with Freddy building his glove, which was a very unique weapon at the time. Um, it's actually not Robert Englund. I listened to the audio commentary. So like the very first Freddy Krueger that you see, I think it's some guy named Tony. Uh, it's like a stunt dude, and they like shot this like really, really late because they needed some kind of title sequence. Mm, ah. uh, but yeah, then we see the credit that says introducing Johnny Depp. Woo! Now we justice to him. <laughs> <laughs> now we know how Johnny Depp got in this movie because we watched Hot Take, the Depp Heard story, where they show his first date with oh, Amber Jesus Heard Christ. and him telling her that like, he was in a band and a friend convinced him to do it, and that's how his whole career started. Yeah. Well, did he know that his worst nightmare wouldn't be in this movie? It would be uh, in like 2016 or something. Booyah! Gotcha, Amber Turd! Jo Johanna, <laughs> Johanna didn't watch that movie. She was Team Amber. No, no, but anyway, no, let's keep going. No, okay, what about it? Let me, tell you, let me tell you, you did not miss it. That movie sucked. Anyway. <laughs> no, the mo mm -mm. Jo no. Johanna's like, I've shit a bed multiple times. Nothing wrong with it. <laughs> I shit in your bed. <laughs> I was just about to defend my, you. My prized possession. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, we get to see Tina. Right, Tina. She's like walking around this boiler room, which was apparently a uh, prison that they filmed in that was full of asbestos. And it's, oh! and it's since been taken. It's since been that demolished. That poor goat. There was a goat. Well, yes. Goat. So Heather Langkamp, I listened to. Sheep? Huh? Were they sheep? It, it's, it's a, a it's, sheep. It's an lamb. animal that goes. Bah. So uh, I sheep. listened to the. <laughs> Well, yeah, I guess a goat, a goat goes. Come on, you're dressed like a cowboy. <laughs> no, I'm dressed as Discount Johnny Depp. He doesn't know he, he's and it, Rango's a chameleon. Anyway. <laughs> so anyway, um, the sheep uh, or the lamb or whatever, it was a reference to uh, Louis Bunnell. It's like a filmmaker. Uh, that's what Craven said in the commentary track. Uh, but Le Heather Langenkamp said that's the question she gets the most. Is like, what's the deal with the sheep? 
Yeah, it's only like in there for like a second. It just yeah. like, runs away. It's like, it only oh! comes back in like a few other movies. Uh, but they couldn't get the sheep to run. So apparently, like before they called action, they just like kicked it in the butt to get it to no! run. Because <laughs> they're like, all right, get the sheep to run. And the sheep would just sit there like confused. So they apparently well, just I mean, like, they like kicked it in the butt to get it to like, run. Like, hey, we took you out of your grazing pasture <laughs> and yeah. put you in this friggin' asbestos yeah. prison. <laughs> um, but yeah, this is a creepy opening. Just some creepy guy in a giant boiler room following her. Uh, but yeah, she wakes up uh, and we get to see like the, the cuts on her dress. Yeah, it's just her shirt. Or her dress. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Her nightgown. Yes. He didn't get her. He got her nightgown, yeah. though. And I like her mom comes in all boozed up. And she's like, what's wrong, honey? And then that guy comes in. He's like, come back to bed, baby. Yeah, all the parents love- are like alcoholics. Mm-hmm. Every single parent's drinking alcohol yeah, in this movie. In the, like, in the credits, it said Tina's mom's boyfriend. And I'm just yeah. like, oh, okay. And uh, <laughs> from the commentary, I think they said that was either... It was like either Johnny Depp's agent or stepdad. It was someone Johnny Depp knew and they were real excited because since they got a line, they got to be in SAG afterwards. The Screen Actors Guild. It seemed like those parents drank a mega pint. Well, (laughs) well, there is something kind of messed up about all the parents and we find out what that is later. Um, Is it messed up though? I was, so, I was confused, but... Is it messed up, though? <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll hopefully I'll have an explanation. So the next day, we get our first hints at the uh, the, the Freddy girls. One, two, let's come for you. Who are the ghost of his previous oh, victims. You don't know that at the time. Doing jump rope, going, one, one two, two, Freddy's coming for you. you. Uh, Three, four, better lock your door. Five, six, six carry a crucifix. Grab your crucifix. Seven, eight, don't stay up stay late. Better late. stay up late. Be- better, oh, better, better stay, stay up late. Nine, Nine ten. ten. Never sleep again. Kick a hen. I don't know. <laughs> Kick a hen. Abuse to all the farm animals. You are a terrible cowboy. <laughs> <Johnny Depp. laughs> anyway. Um, but that's head. a cool shot how it starts in slow motion and then like it plays normal speed, which apparently was like a super complicated shot. They had, had like six people on the camera, like adjusting things because film was hard to work with. Uh, but yeah, it turns out they're all kind of having the same nightmares. Yeah. They don't know that they're dreaming about the same guy yet, but they're yeah. all having nightmares, uh, which is really bothering them. So since uh, Tina is very upset, they decide they're going to stay over her place while her parents are out to make her feel comfortable. Side so note, Tina's boyfriend, when he's like, well, he mentions his dick and she's like, my name has four letters on it. I won't fit on there or whatever. <laughs> Did you see that? <laughs> I was just like, oh, it's Tina's tiny dick boyfriend. <laughs> I was with someone with a tiny dick once. <laughs> Brandon Ralph from Superman Returns? Why, yeah. Why did you look at yeah, Brandon not Ralph? Not Schmantonio Menuzo. <laughs> <laughs> that was a lie. Oh, that's what. Oh, no, Strike that from the record. That was a lie. <laughs> I remember what, no, I That's remember what a he lie. Said, no, he's like, he's like, Tina, my dick has your name right now. And she's like, it only, my name has four words. It wouldn't fit. Four, four letters. Four letters. <laughs> um, so, anyway, are you done talking about dicks? So are we? <laughs> okay, okay. So, um,. I do love this scene of uh, Glenn, Johnny Depp, trying to lie to his parents that he's at his, like, aunt and uncle's. Yeah, yeah, sure. I... Uh, just some kids drag racing outside, I think. And they oh, went by the, the airport. The and it's and like, they're oh, yeah, pressing so the other button. Yeah, so yeah, we're by the airport. Like he's like, scream. He's like, hey, mom, what's up with it? There's other sound effects. <laughs> it's, it's like, like oh, explosion. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there was a crash. I got to call the cops. <laughs> Um, but yeah, this is when they're uh, sharing their the nightmares that they've had. And Nancy's like, yeah, this guy with these fingernails or finger knives. Finger and Tina's knives. like, holy shit, I've had the same dream. And at this point, you think Tina is the main character. Yeah. They do a good job. Yeah, yeah, they introduced her first. So Yeah, except for the covers of the posters kept saying if Nancy doesn't wake up screaming, she won't wake up. At I all. mean, at that point, it's like established like... It- no, it was on the original posters, well, too. Well, let's just hope that people who saw this uh, in the 80s didn't read that. It's like a bait and switch, like how they did with uh, Drew Barrymore. and True. Yeah. Yeah. True. Whoever did Scream must have plagiarized from the guy Clearly. who Clearly! <laughs> Clearly! <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, uh, they hear a sound outside. And even Wes Craven makes fun of this on the commentary. It's like, of course, they have to go investigate it. Yeah. Uh, and we hear the scraping and the screeching, and oh no, it's Rod. It's Tiny Dick's it's boyfriend. T- 
<laughs> That's what I kept calling him in our he, reaction. He's a tiny wad. <laughs> <sighs> Sorry. <laughs> Not really. So yes, uh, Rod and this tiny dick are there. <laughs> Tiny rod. <laughs> and uh, for some reason, Tina's like, you know what? I can go for a little dick riding. Uh, and she, she went for a tiny dick ride <laughs> and it did the job well, apparently, because holy fucking shit, that was so obnoxious. Yeah. Yeah. I felt like Glenn in that scene. I literally was just like, I was like, that's <laughs> so rude. The funny thing is, so rude. Wes Craven said like he, um, I think he moved to Chicago or whatever. And he was still a virgin. He like moved into some apartment complex and he had to like hear that. So he wrote that from personal experience where he's like trying to sleep and that's all he can hear. I lived in an apartment in college. I Yeah. Ugh. So and then Rod's like morality sucks because I guess Nancy uh, is celibate and uh, not Rod. Glenn says that. So <laughs> Nancy is celibate. It's like Sydney and Scream. It's just. Yeah. Dude, oh, my God. Thief. Yeah. A thief. And, and, and <laughs> freaking. Um, yeah. Uh, Glenn is like upset about this, but I'm not upset because Nancy is right. And as a fellow virgin born again, God. I agree with everything Nancy's doing. You should wait until you're married uh, and, and you only do it to have babies. And Glenn's just going to have to deal with that. Glenn is just going to have to deal with that. What's the movie where they, they have the Freddy baby? I don't want that. That's five. The dream child. Yeah, I don't want that. <laughs> so uh, Glenn's going to hell. Uh, <laughs> how he didn't do anything. <laughs> yeah, he yeah, but he wants to. And no, impure no. thoughts are enough to get you into hell. Oh Tina and Tiny God. Dick Rod are going to hell, <laughs> and they do. <laughs> so <laughs> this scene is awesome, and apparently was like thought of like on the day. Um, Nancy is sleeping uh, on the bed, and then we see Freddie like come out of the wall. And it looks like it's like an optical shot, like composited, but no, it was like they bought like a big thing of spandex and put it over the wall and they just had like a stunt man put the makeup on and do that. And they had like a lighting there. So that's like all in camera and it works like super well. Um, yeah. It's a, it's probably the most memorable. There's like oh, yeah. rarely anything where I'm looking at the scene and going like, all right. Like I know the definitely the end scene. I was like, what is this, hack the movies? Yeah, yeah, that, was, that was pretty funny. Uh, um, so yeah, that whole spandex scene is really creepy. And now Tina is in nightmare world uh, and she sees Freddy. I don't know. This scare hasn't held up well for me with the giant arms. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I like the practical effect of it's it, though. Like, I do. It's just like, it's just like, and like when you know how it's done. Yeah, it's I know how it's fun. done. It's yeah. like just two people on fishing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> He's just like, give me a hug, bitch. <laughs> I'm sorry, now, but the hat, the hat is so funny. <laughs> The, I'm like, why, out of all the fashion choices, he's just like, hey, a fedora. Why the Christmas sweater? I don't know. He's not the most fashionable guy. Yeah. Um, I don't know. So I always heard that they put, um, like, sparkler, like, uh, what do they call those? Those little firework things. Uh, not sparklers. Fire like poppers? Uh, like those poppers, like, like on his just blades. Like, 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 throw them down. And yeah. Just, like, People have said that they put that on his gloves, and that's how they got the effect. But listening to the commentary, I think they said that they hooked up a car battery to like the metal in the glove and they put it against the metal wall so there were so there were sparks. How did That's that thing move? Because I bumped it. Oh. Because uh, that is a trick. Because remember in a Highlander, mm. when they're sword fighting, they both have car batteries up their sleeve. So when the swords touch, they just like spark and go crazy. I've always wanted to try that effect. But with my track record, I knew it would go horribly wrong. So I, Tony, you should try it. There's a sword in there. <laughs> um, I, you know I, yeah, I think I can actually see it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not going to try that. I'll help you. It's dangerous, though. I don't think yeah. so. I think it's a great <laughs> idea. Uh, so anyway, Freddy attacking her. There's a lot of really cool visuals. Um, like you said, the, the arms you like. The arms are a little silly these days. Yeah. Uh, I like that he you cuts should. his fingers off. And he's like, watch this. <laughs> it's like, uh, um, have you, you guys haven't seen the Don't Hug Me, I'm Scared show? <laughs> Where the little yellow guy's like, my turn. Ah. <laughs> play, play a clip. You should watch those. Oh, it's okay. so good. It's so okay. good. My turn. Ow. Uh, but yeah, I like when she's like being attacked by him and she like rips his face off and he's like a skeleton. He's like, ah! That was like the scariest part of that whole scene. That was pretty scary. I'm just like, scary. I think this whole thing was pretty scary. Yeah. Old because arms. then she wakes up and this scene's awesome. So they have mm -hmm. a rotating set 
And then I heard, I never even thought about this before, but they're like, yeah, then we had to like secure the lights that are outside the set so they could rotate too. So there wouldn't be any like shadows being all messed ah. up. Uh, so yeah, like basically Freddy is just like dragging her all over the wall and stuff and cutting her up. You don't actually see Freddy do it or, once like, it's out of the sheets. Chest gets ripped yeah, over. Yeah, that's a really cool shot. This is, that's, this is when comp when uh, film studios try and start <laughs> being like CGI it. Yeah, they do this later on in uh, New Nightmare, but they actually show Freddy dragging her and whatnot. Mm. Um, Apparently, you've been saying. Can you imagine being the boyfriend watching your girlfriend just getting like tossed around by like nothing. I'd be like, oh everywhere. no, darn! You're a liar. You'd be like, fuck. There's my chance to get fucked again. <laughs> this is the only woman who likes my tiny dick. <laughs> that, this is Jess's last episode. Everyone, that's fine. You can cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! She was talking about Rod, right? Yeah. Okay. Not Tony's tiny rod. No, but rod, rod in the movie. Yeah. <laughs> I'd, be, I'd, be, I'd be like, oh no. Okay, do I have any more matches? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, to oh, be no. fair, I was talking about tiny dick boyfriend in the movie. Okay. So Tina's dead. Uh, she falls into a puddle of her own blood. Uh, we hear Rod like screaming and jumping out the window to I'll get the hell out you. of there. Because who the hell is going to believe him? Uh, yeah. But yeah, here we get introduced to John Saxon. Woohoo! The late John Saxon. Oh. Uh, I have his autograph. I forgot to bring it in. Forgot to bring a lot of things, didn't you? Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. So anyway, you John know? Saxon. I met John oh. Saxon when I was like right, 14 at Monster Mania. The same Monster Mania I got the, the Evil Dead DVD <laughs> signed by everyone. The same Monster Mania we'll be going to? But this comes out after. Yes, where? That you guys all missed? It was the day after, so. But we had so much fun over yeah. the weekend, didn't we? Mm. Anyway, um, I so I met John Saxon. He's there. You know, he's got all the Bruce Lee movies. I got, like, a picture of him and Bruce Lee. I got his autograph. Uh, and I just told him, like, hey, man, I loved you and Mitchell. And he just went, how the hell do you know what Mitchell is? And he probably said, because I'm Tony from Hack the Movies. Uh, Hack the Movies wasn't a thing yet. Oh, and I'm I was Tony, I will have a show called Hack the Movies. You better watch <laughs> I, I, was, I was like, yeah, I really, it was on Mystery Science Theater and he didn't know what Mystery Science Theater was. And I was like, never mind. What? He was just shocked that like a teenage kid remembered this movie that everyone's forgotten about. Uh, Mitchell is not a good movie. However, Mitchell was very, he was a big influence on Mummy Cop. I kind of based Mummy Cop over how terrible of a detective Stealing Mitchell is. Stealing things. Mm. <laughs> it was inspired. When's mm -mm. season three? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> but Nancy's dad is like uh, the captain or lieutenant. Uh, but he's a cop. But we find out that her parents are separated. It's There's like a weird thing with the parents. Like um, Glenn is the only one who has like a kind of stable family. Because they say Rod's dad abandoned him. Yeah. Nancy's yeah. parents are like separated. Remember, There's yeah. definitely tension there. And then Tina's mom is sleeping around with excited dudes. Uh, yeah, there's Glenn's, something going on Glenn's there. Glenn's parents are sweet. Except at one point when they're just like, oh, yeah. Yeah. Frickin Nancy. Also, the next day, the news is showing like the aftermath. And they show like Nancy's bloody arm come out of the stretcher. I'm like, Tina. I don't. Uh, Tina. I'm like, I don't think they would show that on Why the news. Why wouldn't they zip it up? They just like, we're just like, <laughs> there's oh, that's that. good enough. Why wouldn't they zip it up? But second, uh, I could see if it was happening live, but this is like the next morning. Like they're not playing that on the news. I mean, it's a cool visual, but they're not playing that. It's like, it's like, oh, get the camera. Her arm's falling out. Oh, <laughs> like, so, uh, zip. oh my God, it bugs me so much. I'm like, just zip the I like that they up. have a uh, detective stalking Nancy. Because they know Rod's around, and of course he is. And he's yeah. just like, Nancy, it wasn't me. Someone else killed her. And she believes him. And I, I love that he's just got his leather jacket. And he still isn't wearing shoes yeah. or a shirt. Uh, but yeah, they arrest him. Dad, you used me or whatever. You used me. Uh, and at the school, Lynn Shea is the teacher. <laughs> she is the sister, I believe, of Robert Shea. And she's in a bunch of horror films. Most recently, the Insidious franchise. She's the... Old Lady in yep. the Insidious franchise. I hate those movies. But anyway. Seen it. Um, yeah, so she's the teacher and they have uh, the guy s s talking about Hamlet, specifically a part yep. of Hamlet where they're talking about dreams. And I love like the surfer dude. And like when it, when it turns into the dream mode and he's like saying it like really slow, he's like, I have bad dreams. It just looks so funny coming out of the guy's mouth. Not that I have bad dreams. 
The body bag stuff here is creepy as shit. What did you think of that? I remember watching it actually in high school. Like, I tried to get through this in high school, yeah. but I never did. But that was the one scene that stuck out when it was just like, he lifted her and was just like, boop. And I'm like, oh. It's creepy. Oh. <laughs> What'd oh. she say about the hall pass? Oh, you need a hall pass. Fuck your hall no pass. No running in the hallway. <laughs> so Freddy That's what can... she says, fuck your hall pass. Yeah, she's like, fuck what she your says? hall pass. Screw your pass. <laughs> Why has no one ever cosplayed as that girl? If you guys were at Monster Mate, no, okay, I'm not gonna. <laughs> no one's ever cosplayed as Hall Pass Freddy girl. It's pretty easy. I, you just wear a sweater. I'm Pig gonna tails. do that. I'm gonna do that. I'm gonna be Hall Pass Freddy girl. All Monster Mania. Honestly, do it. You can pull it off. Jess's last episode, everyone. <laughs> I'm anyway. being nice. <laughs> uh, but yeah, what I like about Freddy. I like that he purposely injures himself. So like, cause like w when you're being attacked by someone, you're like, maybe I can hit them and stuff. He's like, no, look, I just cut myself up and I'm fine. Doesn't he have like, yeah, his he maggots, maggots coming, coming out, out of his him? nipple. Ugh. It was like, ew. Don't ew. pussy. Yeah. Don't <laughs> like it. Uh, but yeah, this is when he finally says his name. He says like, come to Freddy. Come to Freddy. And then he does a little. He likes Ugh. to do that. Yeah. Ugh. Yeah. What was wrong with that? I just I hate it. No, not when you just just remembering the scene, I hate it. With this, uh. For our podcast listeners. Ah, oh, the sound. <laughs> I am so sorry. Someone's driving. I'm so someone's sorry. driving right now going, ew! ew. <laughs> I am so sorry. I have to edit this. <laughs> Enjoy. Jess, I need you to up the decibels on that by ten. Okay. Uh, no, do not. Do not do that to these poor people. I have to listen to him. Oh my god. Him. No, you don't have to listen to him. <laughs> I have no choice. I'll go get a Jess, higher ranking person just, right now. Jenna's not your manager, Jess. Oh, I, know I can go get the manager of the manager. <laughs> and she will be like, no. <laughs> you know what, Jess? You're 20 decibels. Get it to 20. <laughs> I'll do six at most. I will delete this whole thing right now. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, she realizes she knows she's in a dream now. And I feel like once you know you're in a dream, you should just wake up. But I guess Freddy's powers don't have that. Um, I mean, in like real life, it doesn't happen like that. Yeah, that Freddy dream I had. No, that, I've out. definitely woken up when one. Like, yeah, but not all the time. That, no, there's times where like my dreams will get like a little too goofy, and I'll be like, "Wait a minute, this doesn't make sense." And then I wake up and I'm like, "Oh." I'm just there have dreaming. been times where I'm like, this has to be a dream. And I try to wake myself up and it doesn't work. And then like 10 minutes later, I wake myself up and I'm like, oh, mm. thank God. You ever have that where you have a dream where things start off normal and then it gets like real weird and then you just snap out of it? Like I, I had a dream like yeah. I was on a lunch with Johanna and she was like really pleasant to talk to. And I was like, oh, oh that wasn't true. Anyway, um, we got a comment over the weekend that said you're too mean to me. So, well, so, now they're going to so, say that about me, apparently. <laughs> well, you know, people say to, this, but I'm then they don't. I'm trying to genuinely be nice. <laughs> they said, that you they can, said you're too mean to me. I'm just saying you can cross-play as the hall monitor lady. Oh, my God. I'm saying well, you, good for you. People say I'm mean, but then I have to deal with shit like this. And there's also stuff off camera that I have to deal with. And that's why I'm mean. What happens off camera? Don't even get me fucking started. Okay. Um, <laughs> I have a list. So she Tony totally hurt my feelings. <laughs> she burns herself. Uh, and gets out of that dream. And I like that she's like screaming in English class. Yeah. But she has like the fucking welts mm -hmm. on her hand. Uh, and I do like Lynn Shay's callback when like Nancy runs out. She's like, you'll need a hall pass. Let it go, lady. Let it go. Yeah. Um, she gets a pass. Although, wait a minute, earlier, and they made fun of this in the commentary because John Saxon's like, what the hell are you doing going to school today? And like, I think like Heather Langenkamp on the commentary is like, that's a good point. Why am I going to school? Like, I mean, everybody just... asked that in the movie too. Yeah. They're like, why are you going to school? Why? What are you doing? Yeah, you just witnessed like the aftermath of a murder. You should not be going to school. Yeah. You got to process this and whatnot. So that was pretty funny. Why did she go to school? Because she said that if she stayed in her room much longer, she'd be going insane. Like she just needed to rent out. But I'm like, go to the park or something. Yeah, I'm like, why school? I've never been like, I'm so stressed out. I need to go to school. Like, then I've never again, done that. Who knows what would have happened if at the park, maybe she just, in her dreams, birds would attack her. I don't know. No, that, that's uh, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2, where the bird goes crazy. I, I really don't remember Part 2. I forgot. Which they actually made fun of in uh, the Freddy's Nightmare show. 
There's an episode where there, there's like a skit where Freddy is like confessing his sins to a priest and he's talking about all the people he kills and at one point he goes, oh, and one parakeet. And I'm like, that's a funny callback. Oh, anyway. now, oh now I remember the parakeet. Oh. <laughs> so yeah, they go to talk to Rod and Rod mentions that he also had a dream about Freddy, uh, which is probably where he got the idea to like scrape the thing to scare them earlier. So they're all having dreams about him. I don't know if Glenn has admitted it yet, but you could tell that Glenn has the same dream. Yeah, I don't think Glenn said anything yet. But he like uh, I think it was earlier when they're talking about like the nightmares, you could see he looks concerned because it's like a visual thing where it's like, oh fuck, I had that dream too, but I don't want to talk about yeah. it. Um, so uh, Nancy decides to just relax with a nice bubble bath. <laughs> You can't relax with a nice bubble I bath. I can't, because that fucking cat doesn't let me relax. <laughs> but when I already take a nice bubble bath, I'm just like, ah, it's so relaxing. And then I hear, <laughs> or she just looks at me. I have a, I gotta send you the new picture where I just, it's like her peeking from the door, just looking like really concerned. <laughs> Apparently cats, they don't understand why you're in the water because they don't like being in the water. Oh, Carson tries to jump in with me. Oh, oh she won't fun. do that because I've yeah, given her a fun. bath in this tub. She like, he that. doesn't like the water touching him or whatever, but like, especially uh, when we're just me like, and Mom! E <laughs> yeah. pretty much, me and Ian, when we used to live at the apartment, we had a shower curtain. So we would have the actual curtain and then the liner. And he mm. would literally go sit in between the liner and <laughs> oh, just God, watch no. him. And I'm like, what the hell? He yeah. can't do it anymore because it's just glass, but he'll still like sit out there and be like, Yeah. <laughs> She's I, fine. I, I, open it up I, I, and I he's like, dog. hey. I have a she dog. He's just like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to wait for my, my real mom. <laughs> she doesn't care about showers, but every time I take a bath, she just has to sit there and like cry. And then she gets upset and leaves and then comes back to make mm. sure I'm alive or not and then cries again. Look, I can't fit, I can't fit in, in a bathtub because I'm too tall. So, Ugh. But instead, instead of a cat, Nancy has to deal with Freddy uh, coming up and he... It'll, it's like this. She's just like, oh man, I'm just. I, I don't, oh no! I, that was a good. She didn't do that. Good but remake, no, right? she she was like, like snort. Well, she wasn't snort. I, I you gotta put your legs up so you can see the. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I, can't, I, can't, I can't get them up. Hmm. When I first saw that, I thought. Oh God! You said this in the office the other day, and I, I was like, was Jesus Christ, Jess! You gotta move it back. I thought he was gonna finger her, and I'm like, dear God! Oh come As on! I said you gotta move it back. So Jess, what are some thoughts you had during the bathtub scene that you shared with me the other day, and it wasn't weird at all? Look, it's a genuine concern I had when I first saw this. Okay, I thought he was going to finger her. <laughs> Look, the the where the naked, where the uh, hand was coming. Yeah, like, where the, I'm like, yeah. don't. That's gonna hurt. I mean, he. Luckily, in Freddy he versus did it. Jason, he does kind of, he at least attempts it, but yeah. But he, but he was a gentleman here, I guess. He was a gentleman here. Freddy, Freddy, Freddy is a gentleman and a scholar. Uh, <laughs> scholar. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so she wakes up for like a second. Yeah. Freddy, I like the hand just going like, woo. Um, well, the they built this on like, so every set like was two stories, so they had like a little thing for him to be under and do that. Was she actually naked? I hope not. So about that, uh, when she does go to sleep and gets pulled under, that's a body double. I think she said in the commentary that it's not her. Okay. Or maybe she was joking, but I don't think it's her. I think well, it is a I body double. I was just like, please don't tell me this. I but that was just something they did. someone actually under her doing the hand thing while she actually is naked. Like, But uh, well, that was uh, like, they did that in like a swimming pool. They put like a cover over the pool with the hole and just like pulled her under. That's a cool scene. That is a cool scene. That is like a really creepy, it's, it's like, creepy uh, scene. And yeah, I guess we should talk about like, this is different than any other slasher that was being done at yeah. the time. Because think of like other slash they were all kind of just rip off of Halloween or Texas Chainsaw where it's like It's a dude, murder. Blah, sometimes blah, blah. it's but a he's, lady he's like not... the first Friday the thirteenth. It's a person, okay? I mean he's technically dude, not a murder, person. whatever. <laughs> it's just kind of just literally just a slasher. They're there, they're with their axe, yes. butcher knight, whatever the hell's going on. It's this at least it's like Fun practical stuff, and he's yeah. not really there. Well, not practical. He's it's like there, nightmarish really stuff. It's like dream. No, no, no stuff. Yeah. how it's filmed. Yeah, but I'm just saying, like, yeah, you're right. Usually, it was just like I'm the killer, and I'm chasing you, and I'm killing your friends one by I one. I would run, but I'm I'm choosing to walk. Yeah, and then in this, like, Freddy runs. <laughs> this gets rid of everyone being like, you should have did that. Girl would have survived. She did this. Like, no, she's in a dream world where she has no control. Yeah. Like, there's nothing any of them can really do yeah. except for get out of the goddamn dream. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's really cool. Like none of the other slashers were really, do you didn't have this kind of like cerebral kind of mystical slasher yet, other than them just always coming back to life. 
I guess uh, Pinhead was the next one who did something similar. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, the greatest magical slasher of all time, the Leprechaun. All of our favorites. Yeah. The Leprechaun. Chucky a little bit. He did do voodoo once in a while, but the, le the Leprechaun is the most magical of all the killers, I hear. He went to space. He went to space. He went to space. So did, so did Pinhead. Yeah, but... That was both in the future. You think they were in space at the same time? We'd have to look at the dates. He was also, the Leprechaun was also in the hood. He was in the Did hood. Did Freddy Krueger ever go to space? No. Well. Does he ever go to the hood? I mean, in some of the dream stuff, he like drops a guy that, off. That's, the, yeah. yeah. But I mean, like, actually. Like, I don't think Springwood has a hood. Uh, in Freddy's dead, it's like a shitty town, but like, it's not a hood. He goes to the town. Goes to I'm trying. I'm trying. I'm failing miserably at this episode. I'm so sorry. Anyway, anyway. Uh, so she survives that. Uh, and I like that she's like freaking out that the mom comes in. She's like, no, I'm fine. Also, is this a scene where the mom's like, can I get you a glass of warm milk? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm we like, we talked. We had a whole warm milk discussion in ugh. the Fright Night episode. Um, so yeah, uh, later on, Nancy is watching Evil Dead. And this is like a gag that they, them and Sam Raimi, Sam Raimi actually gets a thanks at the credits too. So in Hills Have Eyes, there was a poster of a shark inside the family's trailer and it was ripped up. And Sam Raimi interpreted that as the filmmakers being like, Jaws isn't scary, this movie is scary. And then in Evil Dead 1, they go into the basement and there's a Hills Have Eyes poster that's ripped up. Basically ah. saying, Hills Have Eyes isn't scary, Evil Dead is scary. <laughs> and then Nightmare on Elm Street put the Evil Dead clip in this. And then in Evil Dead 2, Freddy's glove is hanging in the thing. So it was like a back and forth oh, that they had going on. Oh, I like on. it. Um, like a friendly little rivalry yeah. right there. Uh, but yeah, uh, Nancy is trying to be comforted by Glenn, but she feels really bad. Guys, she's not looking great. She almost looks 20 years old. God, I look 20 years old. I feel offended by that. I'm 24. I feel offended. By the way, she was 19 when they filmed this. Oh, <laughs> like, okay, I feel, I feel less bad then. I think Johnny Depp was actually older than a lot of them. He just looked really young. Yeah, so. but he didn't say the quote, so. He's just like, it's yeah. Johnny Depp, I'll it's become like, Edward Scott. God, I look 20 years old. It's like, woman, shut up. <laughs> um, So yeah, she ends up dreaming so she can look for Freddy. This is a great plan. Uh, and she finds him while he's attempting to kill Rod, but then he attacks her. And again, with the creepy visuals, Nancy covered in eels. Tina. 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 I always get those two confused. Uh, yeah, Tina is just covered in eels and a centipede comes out of her mouth. Yeah. And according to the commentary, that like bug got loose and everyone got freaked out because they didn't know where it was. I was in CVS yesterday. I saw a centipede. I'm like, no. Nope. <laughs> also, um, in, during that scene, Glenn pops out of a tree and is like talking to Nancy. I'm yeah, like, she's like, "Are you still here?" He's like, "Yeah, I'm, I'm here." I'm like, "How are you talking to him?" <laughs> You're asleep. He's awake. Well, not, yeah. not anymore. But I feel like if he was asleep, that'd be easier to talk to him. I don't yeah. know. That Wait, whole, that you're right. Uh, she thing. does get like attacked, and then she wakes up, and she's like, "You shit." You were supposed to. You sleep. had one job. <laughs> <laughs> I asked you to do one thing. Johnny Depp, how could you? Men, I know. Men. Meanwhile, Rod is in his cell, and Freddie uses the sheet to hang him up by his neck to make it look like a suicide. Rest in uh. peace, Tiny Rod. Rest in peace, Tiny Rod. Beat me. And that was cool. They had like a they had like a wire inside the sheet. They used some reverse photography with that. That's a cool. That's cool. I like the it. shot. They they mention in the commentary that like the shot of Freddy going through the cells. They're like, yeah, I feel like Terminator Two kind of got that idea from us. Maybe just yeah. they added the liquid metal part of it. Terminator's got nothing on Freddy. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, so Rod is dead, and you know they have to go to uh, a funeral. And of course, this is a normal Midwestern town. I think in Freddy's Dead, they say Springwood is in Ohio. So, you know, you got all those lovely Ohio palm trees in the background, <laughs> just everywhere. Say it. Uh, aren't we in Illinois? <laughs> well, now it's Ohio. Aren't we in Ohio? Aren't we in Ohio? I was Honestly, like, I don't I was think. Like, I was like, <laughs> shit, what's my line? I don't think they say where Springwood is until Freddy's dead. But yeah, like they kept saying like they wanted it to look like a Midwestern town, but they shot in LA and you see all these palm trees at the funeral. It's like, it could have just been LA. I don't know why it's not. Look, I've been to Ohio. There are so many palm. No, it's not. Or it's somewhere <laughs> else in California. Like, you mean Ohio? Maybe, maybe that was oh, like an mind. ambitious landscaper in Ohio and he's like, I know. 
I'm gonna plant these palm trees and show that I can oh. make them last in this in this season in this environment. And then his business. What's this dune? Palm yeah. tree. Palm <laughs> yes, trees. it's like dune. Really. Palm trees would die instantly in Ohio. Do you know how many, how many months it snows up in Ohio? No, I've never been like, to Ohio, and I never. Ohio. No, uh, yeah, sure. Um, well, near the lakes, it's I, I've, it's, I've it's never, those ten months out of the year. I feel I've never been to Ohio, and I will not be going to Ohio. It's not I bad. don't agree with what they stand for, and I reject them. If you live in Ohio, I'm throw my head. Yeah. I'm just, can I just, I'm just like, what? I want a hot take against Ohio. No, Ohio. <laughs> I'm, I'm calling, I'm calling you out, Ohio. <laughs> The only, the only shit I give Ohio is not for the people. It's the weather there. Stop the snow. Too I, much snow. I'm pretty sure it was Ohio. Maybe it was Idaho. I don't know. Anyway. People were hating on Ohio Illinois. lately. It was not Illinois. Are we huh? Illinois? People were hating on Ohio lately. Like Ohio and France for some reason. Well, France, That's obviously. Too, totally. <laughs> No, no, we had her check. Our French demographic is not that big. Oh, yeah. so oh my God. Forget, forget, forget. Don't you worry. You're fine. So, you will not be canceled. So Nancy tells her parents she describes Freddy, and they're like, oh, fuck. Like, they clearly are just like, uh-oh. Uh-oh. Um, but yeah, Nancy's mom takes her to a sleep study place, and the doctor is Roger Rabbit, who we were, well, not, it was me. He was at a convention we were at. I might have told this story in the Roger Rabbit episode, but I'll tell it again. I was in an elevator with him, and he kept looking, like, really nervous around me. Because you're so famous? And I'm just like, why does this little guy look so stressed out? I didn't know who, like, I, I know that actor. I just, I've never seen him in person before, and he looks very different these days. He so doesn't like, really look like Roger Rabbit. No, and he's just <laughs> looking at me, and I'm like, this guy's like, this guy looks like he's really on edge. Uh, and then I looked at the pamphlet. I'm like, oh, that was Roger Rabbit. I'm like, oh, he probably thought I was going to, like, ask him to do the voice or some shit because it was just us on the Aww. elevator. Meanwhile, I was in an elevator with the voice of Bowser. Ooh. Uh, we Jack just said Black? hello. I wish. Oh, <laughs> I wouldn't be leaving that elevator. <laughs> anyway, we were just talking, small talk or whatever, and then I said, have a good evening, and I got off at my level, but I had to get off on my floor. Mm -hmm. And then later on, we were at the same party. We were both drinking. We saw each other. We were both drunk as shit, and we clinked glasses. Fantastic. You also talked to Lita there. So hot. Although when I was walking down, she was in front of me. And some guy went, Lita, I fucking love you. Like right in her face. She's like, okay. And just like kept going. <laughs> I was talking to someone recently. They're like, Lita seemed like she was in like a bad mood when we met her. She seemed like really mean. She's like, and then, then knowing what that guy did, like, oh yeah, she probably had to deal with like a bunch of assholes. Um, when I went to meet her, she was nice as pie. If someone is mean to you at a convention, it's usually not their fault unless their name rhymes with Shman Sh Shavini. Um, I'm switching the chair. That's My okay. back hurts so bad. That's okay. Like, what are you getting uh, if we're ever at a convention and you're like, wow, Tony is like, Tony's like really in a bad mood. Don't, I don't want you to think like I'm like a bad guy and I mean, it's he just is. that, it's just that you did something wrong and you're the problem. Uh, anyway. I let's, just say, don't be creepy to people that you look up to. Or just don't be creepy to people. Yeah. Oh, well, what's creepy? You. And, fuck you. Anyway. <laughs> so, so Dr. Roger Rabbit. <laughs> Dr. Is like, Roger Rabbit. He's like, oh boy, we're going to put you to sleep. <laughs> uh, yeah, he sounded exactly like that. The nurse is Wes Craven's ex-wife. Um, cool. So yeah, they, uh, they put her to sleep and they're testing her like brain waves and whatnot. And you know, this really dates the movie. Nancy's mom just lights up a cigarette in the hospital. Yeah. And I'm like, ah. Uh, the 80s. Love it. Uh, but yeah, they, I, I'm actually shocked they didn't show any of this dream sequence here. Yeah. But it actually kind of works better because mm. you're like, okay, people are watching her now. Clearly nothing's creepy. Yeah, nothing's going to happen, happen because nothing was happening. Yeah, everything everything at was at a three instead of the five and six. And yeah. like, oh, everything's fine. Oh, no, but, she's in rapid eye movement. Everything's great. Oh, God, everything's <laughs> going wrong. But that's the thing. from like their perspective. But, but yeah, that's the thing. Like usually in these horror movies, like the creepy thing doesn't happen when there's too mm -hmm. many witnesses. But now it's just like. Yeah, he doesn't give a shit. He's yeah, like, all right, hey. She's out. And then she he's wakes like, up. He's like fresh meat. Hey. She wakes up. She has like a white streak in her hair. Now she looks like. A uh, friggin' old bat. Like, she looks like she's pushing, I don't know, like 25. It's like, ugh, lady, oh, you're goodness, over the I'm hill. Thinking, Pack it up. Ginger goodness, from I'm Ginger 20, Snaps. <laughs> I'm 24. Ooh, I'm not there yet. She, you got one year, Jess. Sorry. Oh, Sorry. Less than that. Oh. Yeah, you go to, the, go to the old folks' home after that. You're <laughs> At this point, maybe. 
We all can't age gracefully like me. Anyway. Like, I'll try some prunes. <laughs> I'll eat prune juice. Anyway. Eat prune juice. Yeah, drink prune juice and eat prunes. Anyway. No, thank you. Uh, this scene is the one that like really creeped me out as a kid because it's like oh her hair and she's cut but then she actually like the hat. pulls the hat out and at no point does anyone go what the fuck and they're just like huh, where that hat come that's from that's a really stylish hat yeah that's a real Where'd stylish you, did hat you, th is that, did that help you fall asleep did she say that like the name is written on the hat did I imagine yes. that yes she did Fucking Freddy Krueger. Uh, no, no, even no, even in the Fred nightmare realm, he's just like, oh, I don't want to lose my hat. Oh, like, I, don't like I wonder if his underwear was also embroidered. <laughs> yeah, it was like the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday nah. one. Probably. Also, I like that the, the subtle nod to um, Nancy's mom's alcoholism throughout the film with like her hiding like the bottles and stuff. In the towel closet? Yeah. Why? Yeah. No one... <sighs> Hide when, it where you can, I guess. When, when I hide booze, I make sure to put it in a closet that everyone in the house uses yeah, every it's day. Like, it's like it's only me and my daughter here. I really got to hide my That's uh, where they would least expect it. When I have <laughs> alcohol, I just have it out in the open because I don't have a problem and it's for anybody to drink. <laughs> I mean, Nancy's Nancy's not going to be drinking. She's too busy drinking coffee. Admitting you have coffee. a problem is the first step, Johanna. Don't worry, Mom. We're here for you. Don't call out your mother. What's happening? Johanna's <laughs> getting too personal again on this show. <laughs> Should I start crying too? <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know uh, the, the mom lets her know. <laughs> the mom lets her know that Fred Krueger is dead. She's like, "Stop bringing that guy up. He's dead." Uh, so Nancy's just like, "Okay, my mom knows a little bit more than she's uh, letting on." Uh, and then, of course, um, Glenn and Nancy they hang out on a uh, bridge. Uh, with a typical Midwestern backdrop of palm trees everywhere. Mm. Um, typical, yeah. Oh, it's funny, the close-ups for this were done on the New Line Cinema building. Huh, huh. I guess they couldn't get a camera like in the eh, water whatever. looking up. I mean, they want to ruin the equipment. Yeah, so uh, what you got, Nancy is now really into survival, as she says. Uh, and she's got a booby trap <laughs> book, and she's going <laughs> to do <Boobie>. booby <laughs> traps, which apparently are illegal. That's bullshit. Booby traps oh. are illegal? Yeah. Poor Kevin McAllister. Oh, he didn't you get could, caught up. You could hurt an innocent person who just happens to be walking in. It's really just... He's just, a dream demon. It, it, it's the government. They just, they're just they just like, well, if we want to arrest you, we don't have to deal with traps. Get Kevin McAllister would have been fucking dead if he didn't accept Kevin all those Kevin McAllister would have uh, been sent to juvie. He can't make booby traps. Well, luckily it was probably... Out. That's just him. I think you should booby trap everything. Did you see the guy hey, who booby trapped? Guys are to kill Did you see the guy who booby trapped the uh, his Amazon package? Because some no. guy kept, some guy kept stealing his Amazon package, so he had That's like okay. a he had like a like a firework, some kind of explosive. Oh device. yeah, yeah, he has like the fireworks, and then you pick it up and just go bam, yeah. and then be so like, the guy oh, went to pick God. up the box and exploded. He like fell, and his like pants fell. He's like ah, ah, and the guy's like in his house just screaming at him, telling him he's called the cops. At one point, <laughs> he brought out like a shotgun. And he's and like, he's just Get like and the dude's just like, please help me. <laughs> I've seen ones of like glitter bombs, like they'll, love, like, they'll yeah. purposely put out like an Amazon package, whatever, and then yeah. they pick it up and then it explodes as a glitter bomb. Yeah, if you're yeah. Like, if all you're over their car, if yeah. you're stealing packages off porches, you're stupid. Anyway, just saying the truth. Or they're smart. No, don't do that. Because Amazon put those small businesses no, out of because, business. No, because you might be getting a. a, a don't steal Amazon packages off of people's porches. Just rob a train like they were doing last year. Just rob a train instead. Train? Oh, yeah. That was the thing in L.A. They were just like robbing the trains from their Amazon packages. That was like a why thing. why we need more drones. No, okay. Yep. Anyway, uh, Nancy's mom puts bars all over the windows and the doors. It's not creepy. Yeah, it's pretty. It stands out. Throughout the movie, she just gets drunker and drunker. It's like my parents' neighborhood where there's that one house that just had evergreens in the front of it to block what they were yeah. doing. Guess which house burnt down because they were growing marijuana in their garage? The one that had evergreens in front of it blocking what they were doing. Wow. Oops. It's like, I always knew those guys are up to something. <laughs> I'm glad it was just that. Anyway. Oh, no. At least. Okay. Yeah. So Nancy's mom is like, all right, I'm going to tell you everything. What? Just get just when she goes downstairs. So get, go She's on. like, we're gonna go downstairs. She's like, look, years ago, this man ruined our quiet Midwestern town full of palm trees, <laughs> and he took our children away from us. He killed twenty children, 
And then there was that amazing trial and the lawyers were there and the judge was a celebrity and it was a big thing. And then they realized they signed the search warrant in the wrong place and he got off scot-free. Technicality. Mm. Yes. And then the townspeople were like, not on our watch. And they, 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 they. Vigilante justice. They did vigilante. Vigilante (laughs) justice. They found him and they burnt him alive. Uh, you would see more of this in the flashback scene in Freddy's Dead. Spoiler, as he was being burnt alive, three dream demon sperm looking things came up and they're like, hi, do you want magic powers? And he went, okay. (laughs) Um, also, if you want to see a version of this origin story, the very first episode of Freddy's Nightmares is his origin story. They change it a lot. Nancy's parents aren't there. You find out later on in the show that that Freddy's Nightmares is in its own universe, and these movies are movies within that universe. This was before the multiverse stuff? Yes. Uh, Well, I guess, actually, no. New Nightmare introduced the multiverse in this series. Uh, So, yeah, they burn him alive, and she kept the the knives, and she leaves him in the furnace. I That's what bugs me. I'm like, why the fuck did you keep it? (laughs) So I think, and I didn't hear it in the commentary, but I read this years ago. I think there was uh, originally a thing in the script, or maybe a deleted scene, where she actually let her know, like, like they Nancy had an older sibling who was killed by Freddy. And that's why, like, the town, like, that's why like, a lot of the parents are all messed up. Because I guess they had kids who died and they had kids afterwards. Gotcha. Uh, but I think that was all cut out. Uh, so, yeah, she's like, Freddy's dead. He can't get you. It's going to be fine. Please here's get the, some sleep. Here's the proof. It's like, I just don't no. understand why she kept it. And I like seeing the sledgehammer in the front of the frame. Cause it's like, that comes up in a little bit. I never and also, that. huh? I didn't see that. Yeah. It's that's like good. right that's at the good. bottom of the frame. Like, that's pretty funny. And then I feel like when they cut to Glenn in his bed, there's a vulture above his bed. I'm like, it's pretty, that's oh. not so subtle. <laughs> the, the sledgehammer was a little subtle. The, the vulture. I'm like, uh Oh, he's dead. <laughs> um, Johnny Depp's outfit is great. They need to bring those fucking crop tops back. I, I I'm not kidding. I literally had a post about this on Twitter like a while ago. Bring them back. You told me to wear that. And I'm just like, I'm not buying a shirt. I'm just <laughs> yeah, I'm like, are you going to wear this? I'm like, I don't feel like buying a shirt. I'm going to borrow stuff from my parents. I should have wore the crop top for this episode. I thought you were going to wear the sweaty. The, the sweaty. The sweaty. The Freddy sweater. I mixed them together. I think, well, for the same reason I didn't wear the crop top. I think it's a size too slow. Too, too low. Uh, Do you have the sweater? Yeah, we have a sweater. Where? In no. there. No, don't get it now. We're in the middle of the review. I want the sweater. <laughs> oh, no. You didn't know we've had that in there? No. I saw it. I, I was... had this one the whole time. Oh, no, no it's Freddy. Oh, wait, it's just <sighs> Johanna. How do you feel? I'm not here to murder children, I promise. Why are you wearing that Christmas sweater? Are you feeling festive? Yeah, Christmas is coming up. Just... Why was it a red and green sweater? I always want like a flashback where he was at like a holiday party because, when he got arrested. Because red... <laughs> Because I don't know, and green because I, I like know. in the TV show he's wearing the red and green sweater in court. It's like, buddy, I would have wore a suit. <laughs> I, I would have wore a suit, buddy. Hey, it looks comfortable. Is it comfortable? <laughs> yeah, it's pretty comfy. It looks comfortable. It's like official too. Why not anyway. kill people with some comfortable clothes? Don't take that out of context. If you do, I will cry. <laughs> so Nancy calls Glenn. She's like, whatever you do, don't fall asleep. Dumbass. Glenn falls asleep. I love you, Johnny. Uh, he's like the worst boyfriend. He's doing everything the opposite that she asks. Here, here, here we go. Amber Heard defender over here. Oh, he's the worst. <laughs> yeah, that's, he's that, the yeah, worst. That, yeah, it's just like, you know, Trump and Biden. You have to pick one. It's not that you can hate both. Yeah. Well, I, I, I picked the third option. Harambe? He turned out to be more. Harambe? No, he turned out to be more controversial than I thought. Uh, that's because you're an idiot. <laughs> yeah. I, look, he's a. He's a, he's a noble Christian man, <laughs> and uh, I really liked his music. I didn't think I didn't think he would do certain things. Anyway, let's get back to this. <laughs> um, wow. So yeah, na- uh, Nancy's mom. I have it here. Nancy's mom must be drunk if she didn't smell the coffee machine making coffee she's, underneath she's Nancy's the bed. The one coffee machine, all the mugs. Well, that that looks like my room. I always drink so much tea, whatever that I have like mugs all over the place. <laughs> That's a good point. I just love. Like, eh. Hold on, this needs. And then freaking, it's underneath brewing the coffee. It's brewing the coffee. It's on. Like, you don't see the wire extending <laughs> under there, too? Like, what? 
Um, oh, she just pulled up. She's like, thank God we have a second coffee maker. It's like, yeah. why do they have two? <sighs> but yeah, no, she uh, she keeps calling Glenn. <laughs> she keeps calling Glenn. And the parents are like, oh my God, take the phone off the hook. She's so annoying. I Remember when you used to be able to do that? Yeah. Hmm. Now you have to throw your phone in the woods. Basically. Yeah. Throw it in the ocean. Every single time it's like, oh, Johanna's calling again. I never call you. So every time it's like I do that, but with spam, like spam callers, and just like all hey. the, the the scams. Yeah. Oh God, I'm getting like because Pennsylvania is a swing state. So all the political. I, I've I been get text getting, messages and call, oh my God, it's so annoying. As of someone, recording, I got a big day. Don't let the radical Mark Maffa put Philadelphia criminals behind bars. Support Joe Hogan, and I tweeted. Hulk Hogan? I mean, I texted back. I'll stab my eyes out if he wins. And then they went, vote to increase our taxes so that the rich corporations, they don't have any regard for my eyes. So I will not, I will not be voting for that person. Yeah. Hey, more slugs, more, more drugs, less slugs. I already messed it up. Damn it. Johanna sneezed through us all off. Let's continue. It's okay. Um, it's okay. I think the sweater's dusty. <laughs> <laughs> it hasn't been washed ever. Ready? I would have not put it on, to be honest. So Nancy, she like breaks her phone because she's mad. But then it rings, and then she answers it, Ugh. and it's Freddy Krueger's Freddy Krueger going, "I'm your boyfriend now, Nancy." Bleh. And then he goes, "See, I was nice enough to just go blah, because he I does not do make, that at all." But okay, I wanna, Tony, I wanna, I wanna what make, are you talking about? Well, like kind of, but he just Je goes, Jess, pl play the clip, and you better add my audio to it. <laughs> I had no choice. <laughs> anyway, uh, that scene's always creepy. Leprechaun tried to like redo that scene with a tiny hand coming out yeah. of the phone. It didn't work. It didn't work. Not Look, tough. guys, hot take. I think Nightmare on Elm Street might be better than the first Leprechaun. I know that's controversial, but what? that is where I stand. Oh my gosh. However, however, Leprechaun 3 and 4 are better than every other movie. Look, Leprechaun's just a fun movie to watch on St. Patrick's Day. It really is. It really surprises it really is. your parents when they walk it's in. It's very historical for Ian. <laughs> um. <laughs> when I was in Dublin, I went to the Leprechaun Museum, and it was, it was so fascinating. Oh, no. And they had, like, one section that, like, like oh, yeah, the horror movie. Anyway, look at <laughs> So, Glenn gets pulled into his bed. I love this death that scene. so awesome. It's pretty good. Uh, yeah, he With gets, his TV on his lap, and I'm like, that's yeah. really heavy. His TV was his. Yeah, his TV's on his lap, and it's like, buddy, you're gonna you're gonna melt your you're gonna melt your testicles, man. You're yeah. gonna be you're gonna end up being sterile. Get that off your goddamn. Was it, lap. it was his TV and his like uh, his, boombox. his stereo. Yeah, yeah because yeah. oh yeah. So his mom wakes him up for a second, and she's like, you you have the TV on and the stereo and your stereo, and he's like, yeah, I want to listen to my music and watch the TV. Miss Nude America is on tonight. And then she's like, how will you hear what she has to say? And he goes, who cares what she has to say? Sexism. You, you know what? Mm -hmm. uh, that We blame the writer. You should go tell Wes Craven how you feel. I will. Just like he's stealing stuff from... Or no. <laughs> uh, what was it? I'll Scream. <laughs> Scream is stealing from Nightmare Scream on Elm Street. Scream is stealing from Nightmare on Elm Street. Whoever that Scream guy like, was. Hey, I don't know who this is. <laughs> <laughs> Come to think of it. There's a janitor wearing a Freddy yeah. sweater in Scream. Whoever did Scream, they're, they're in a lot of trouble. We will be, we will be reporting them. <laughs> I, I wonder who that actor is, too. Where yeah. is it? Robert oh. Englund should sue that actor. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, Man, you're so, really sniffing a lot. Yeah, I'm dying. <laughs> Do you want to take the sweater off, or are you committed no, to I'm it? I'm committed. Okay. I'm committed to so, the bit. So, uh... So the blood is going all over the ceiling and apparently they like, um, this is the same set as mm. the rotating set from earlier. Uh, and obviously redressed, but they said they wanted to like kind of uh, tilt it a little bit so the blood could get all over, but then like it threw off the balance of it. So at the very end of the shot, you see the blood is coming out of the bed and going diagonal yeah. <laughs> because it's like apparently just went out of balance. You like see like the sheets like. Just, yeah. Oh. Also, I think Freddy, isn't he supposed to like be killing people and making it look like accidents? How do the hell you make this look like an accident at all? Yeah, at I think point, I'm, yeah, I was gonna say he's just desperate. Yeah, at this point, I, he was like, I was like, fuck. Like, yeah. He's like, I can't get Nancy. So, he's like, what are they gonna do? Arrest me? Johnny Depp, <laughs> kill me. <laughs> um, Rest in peace, Johnny Depp, until the next movie. 
and uh, pray yeah. pray for your sanity in 2016. Nancy's dad doesn't take her seriously about all the Freddy stuff. He thinks she's like going crazy, and he's very upset about it. Uh, she sets up all her booby traps. <laughs> and booby. Yeah, her mom has now just passed out drunk, so she don't worry about her. She's like, good night, mom, and she's like, good night. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, she sets up all the booby traps, um, and her plan is to get Freddy into the real world, uh, so she can kill him physically. Bring him in like she brought the hat. Yes. Yeah. He's like, bring my hat back. Bitch. Yeah. So she goes into the dream boiler room world to look for him, uh, and yes, she succeeds. He uh, attacks her, and then I like that she falls in the boiler room and then falls in front of her house. Yeah. Yeah. Apparently On there the was roses. Ouch. Yeah, they were real roses too. Oh no! Um, apparently they, uh, and I like how that's set up where the roses were there, and then when the bars came, the roses got thrown down. So that was good setup. Apparently there was going to be a blue screenshot of her falling like three thousand feet. Oh my god! Uh, but they ended up. I guess the it was just too expensive. So they're like, let's just cut to where she just plops in front I of think the that house. Works, yeah, it works yeah. fine. It works fine. It works fine. They do something similar, I think, in Nightmare Three. I mean, they do a couple like falling for a really long time. Definitely in Freddy's Dad, they do it a couple times. Yeah. Um, she succeeds. She grabs him. And I actually really love this shot of like where she has like the roses and whatnot and the camera pulls out. She's in her bed and the roses disappear. Uh, I thought that was really cool. Uh, but yeah, she succeeds. He's hiding behind her bed. Yeah, so she thinks she fails. And then this is the only thing that scared me throughout the whole movie was when he just went, bah! Bah! <laughs> <I'm> like, ah! <laughs> uh, but yeah, she sets up her Looney Tunes trap <laughs> with the sledgehammer. Wait a minute. Was he just waiting there for being like, it didn't work? And he's like, I did. <laughs> Surprise. <laughs> but yeah, like he kicks. He gets hit in the, hit in the, the, the belly. It would have been funnier if it was the balls. Like, uh, but then he gets like knocked over and he falls onto the stairs that conveniently have a mattress. And then the mattress disappears on the next shot. That always. Maybe they're still in a dream. That, al know. that always know. stood out to me when I was just like, there's a mattress there. Like, there's very clearly a I mattress not, there. I didn't notice that. You didn't notice it? And now that you said it, the movie's ruined for me. I, exactly. That, that, look what you've done. Now that one scene. Uh. Zero stars. Zero stars. I, I just give it nine now. So this is this is a lot of fun where he's chasing her, but now she has the upper hand. Yep. It's always fun when that happens. Um, yeah, because there's never really been like at this point like a final girl who's gone like this hard on the villain. Oh yeah, she like it's usually like I'm running and I, I managed to get a couple hits in and yeah. blah blah. But no, she actually prepared. She's like, okay, I'm gonna blow up this lamp in front of him. I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna do that. Um, now this is crazy. You know how, like, in Halloween 2, when Michael gets caught on fire, he disappears and another strange person in a fire suit shows up? Yeah. In this movie, I... I Look, I'm just I'm just theorizing. Uh-huh. She, she goes to light Freddy Krueger on fire. Yep. And then another guy who looks like Freddy Krueger, but who's 70 pounds heavier, shows <laughs> up. And I think that might have been his brother, Teddy Krueger, who also <laughs> happened to be there. Ted Krueger? Ted Krueger was there. His his chubbier brother, uh, and you know he spells uh, Kruger with a C instead of a K. <laughs> no, that doesn't make any sense if it's mm -hmm. his brother. It's because he just changed it. Yeah, he, he wanted changed to fit it. in more. Kind of like you know your dad. He wanted to change his name to fit in more. Yeah. <laughs> Ted. Then, so so yeah. so Teddy Kruger. Spellings of like Palooza. So 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 Teddy Kruger was <laughs> like you know he was he was kind of behind the scenes like he was like following Freddy. He was he was shadowing Freddy. He had recently just died. Yeah. Uh, and he's just like, Freddie, I'm going to watch you. I'm going to learn from you. But he also got pulled into the real world. And then when she threw the fire, Teddy was like, Freddie, get out of here. And then Teddy got lit on fire. And that's why we have this fat Freddy Krueger. It's definitely not the stuntman in a ton of padding to protect himself from the fire. It's actually funny. When I was watching it, it's just like, it's so clearly. It's what <laughs> whatever. At least it had the Freddy face yeah, on. You can yeah. see the scarring. and yeah. It's not like Halloween 2 where it's like, that's just a guy in a fire suit. That's not Michael Myers. But he didn't have the hat. Now, at this point, the hat's gone. She took the hat. And I guess yeah, he, and she he can regrow fingers. He, he can copy himself, but he can't grow that hat back. He can't just... Uh, Family heirloom. Yeah. Um, so the dad, like, I love the cop that's like, hey, lady, relax. And Nancy's just breaking all the windows. And she's like, help me, help me. And then he's like, huh, I should probably help her. It's like, I should probably get her dad. Yeah. So the dad shows up. They get in there and they're like, where is he? Oh, no. He's in mom's room. And womp, womp. mom turns into a Muppet. 
What was that? It's time to play. The music. It's you know what she kind of looks life. like? First, like, she looks like something that you see in Beetlejuice. She looks like yeah. one of the corpses you would see in Beetlejuice. <laughs> I just love the hand, just like ah. I just like how he's just on top of her, and they're just like yeah. oh, and then she's just burnt. <laughs> yeah. So I guess Burn Freddy bones. does still have some powers in the real world. It's never explained. Yeah, it's always unclear. Well, and two, it makes sense because he enters through the guy's body. It's the gay one, by the way. Uh, so he's able to use his powers in the real world and not have to do it in the dream world. But all the other ones, whenever they bring him into the real world, it's unclear like what his limits are. Yeah. Like, okay, he could be killed, but he could also do some of the magic stuff. Um, so yeah, she's dead. And I like this ending where she's just like, wait a minute, I figured it out. I'm not afraid of you. Yeah, she's like, you're I'm not afraid anymore. <laughs> she's like, you're you're preying on our fear of you to get stronger, and I'm not allowing you to yeah, have. I'm taking my, back my energy. I'm taking back the energy I gave you. I'm not allowing you to have. I'm not afraid of you. You cannot prey off my fear, and I've defeated you. Get him. And he's just like, ah. I've turned Robert to the England is dust. really good in this, but he's very like compared to the sequels, he's very restrained in this. Yeah, he's not as like, haha. You know what I mean? He does do jokes. Does he and say bitch at all in this? I don't even think he says bitch in this until like, part no. three. And even in like two, he's not in two that much. Uh, it isn't until three when he starts becoming like a real clown. That's why three is my favorite because it's like. And then four, four, four in part four when he put the. Well, three is when Nancy comes back too, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's when she dies. Yeah. Isn't three also the one where her dad comes back and it's just like, yep, I'm in heaven now. It's like, really, you believe uh, that? I think so. Remember that one? Yeah. He's like, I'm dead now. I'm Now I'm in heaven. It's me, the angel he, of your father. And it's just he, like, just kidding, bitch. It's me, Freddy Krueger. I know he fights a stop motion skeleton that does not age well. Yeah. And then she comes back in New Nightmare, but that's in the real world. That's a whole different story. Anyway, and we're yes. talking about the first one. Sorry. Yes. So, uh, oh, I was, what I was saying, uh, it isn't until like par four where he puts the sunglasses on on the beach. It's like, okay, now we're now that's funny, Freddy. Getting goofy, yeah. Um, but yeah, so she he disappears. She walks out and everything's fine. Apparently, Wes like wanted to just end it there and have like a happy ending, and he didn't want to do sequels. Mm. But I guess Robert Shea obviously made a good decision yeah. and was like, nah, you got a sequel bait. And it's like, oh, you, okay. You can't, you can't just start with Freddy's hand. You gotta get the whole Freddy. <laughs> These didn't come out till way later. <laughs> um, they don't know that. So. Uh, I do like everything's great. All her friends are alive and they get in that nice, cool red convertible mm. and the cover of the red convertible is green. red and green. <laughs> and I love that they're screaming and like, the, by the way, the, her and her mom are all wearing white. It's all nice. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, <laughs> the little girls. Yeah. One, two, the mom here, sees the little girls. She's like, uh oh. And then Freddy grabs her and pulls her. <laughs> She's just like, goodbye. It is goodbye. Like a dummy. <laughs> <It's clearly> a <laughs> <laughs> um, I did. I did have just, a giggle. Yes, yeah. that just end, it ends so abruptly, though. Yeah, it's just like he ah. didn't really want to do that ending, and like he didn't want to kill like Nancy. I think so. He kind of did the they just drive away. And he's like, all right, I guess we'll kill the mom. Why not? But even with like, even if it just were to end there, it still ends so abruptly. It's like I'm not afraid of you, and he turns into pixie dust. And if she just walks outside, like everything's okay, and I'm like. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think the end, she was just gonna like walk away or something. I don't know. It's, I forget what the original ending was, but um, it's very I don't know. anticlimactic. But it's a very good movie. Oh yeah, it's, it's great. a really good movie. It introduced us to a very creepy killer, who was somewhat charismatic. A new type of slasher. A new type of slasher. Our our supernatural slasher. But yeah, it's it's a it's a killer you really can't run away from. Who knows all your deepest, darkest secrets because he can literally get inside your head. Mm -hmm. And he's a horrible person. Yeah. Uh yeah, there's Where, just where's a, a where's a weird looking hat? He's very festive. He yeah. loves the holidays, loves the apparently. Holidays. <laughs> uh, uh but very yeah. asymmetrical with the one glove. Anyway, continue. Sorry. <laughs> I'm just looking at the doll and I'm like, let's see what else we can I say. I feel like this would be really hard to kill someone with. I feel like you're gonna break your finger. I mean the metal the, the ring finger on this doesn't work, really. Yeah, every I mean, time every time I make a fist and then go back up, it's just like that. Yeah. I have to I have to physically go like that. It's um a cheap prop, like Yeah. But uh yeah, it's a great film. It is a classic. It really made Wes Craven Wes Craven. Of course, he went on to do like huge things like Scream and uh Swamp Thing. Although he might have done Swamp Thing before this. Mm -hmm. Swamp Thing's awesome. Mint Salad did a review of Swamp Thing. Yeah, she also did a review of Man Thing. Me and her did a review of Man Thing, and then she went. She took it upon herself to do to review Swamp Thing. 
Good for her. Which, by the way, the one... Are you dead? <laughs> the one bad guy in Swamp Thing is the guy who played Kruger in Last House on the Left. So oh. anyway, uh, yes, we love this movie. It's very, very good. Robert Englund now charges a lot of money at Monster Mania, and his line is always out the door, so he's doing well. Uh, it led to a bunch of sequels that we're going to get to. We're going to go through... How about we go through all the sequels? Yay! Sure. And the remake eventually. No. Are we going to do Freddy vs. Jason too? Yes. So it means we have to do all the Jason movies. We're almost done, those. I love Freddy Do you know what it's almost time for? Jason X. Oh, oh yeah, spoiler. We're not going to do three in a row next time. Oh. We decided that the next three Jason movies are actually kind of big and they all deserve their own episode. <laughs> like, Does that mean Freddy I have a chance of being in Freddy vs. Jason? You have a chance of being yes. in Freddy vs. Jason. Yes! <laughs> um, yes! Sorry. So yes, excited. that is it from us. Uh, do you love this movie? Is the how does this rank on your slasher franchise? Is the big three? Is this your favorite? Uh, yeah, let us know. And uh, yeah, we'll be back. I already did a mini review of Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two, but I think it deserves a closer look with a panel and a podcast type review. Mm. So next time we will do that. We'll do Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two: Freddy's Revenge, the gay one. Uh, but if you want to know what I have to say about it, you can watch my little mini review from a few years ago. I feel like I have to dress like this for that one. I don't know why. <laughs> no, there's like literally a leather daddy bar in that one. Uh, anyway, Jessica, uh, where can we find you? You can. Have you done any reactions to this movie at all? Yes. If I make it, if I get it out on time, we'll see. And if it doesn't get copyright claimed like the Final Destination one did. Yeah, YouTube. Could you... <laughs> I love you, YouTube. I watch where, videos. Where can we find you? You can find me on YouTube at Just Daydreaming. J-E-S-S -S, Daydreaming. All one word. Okay. I hope. I always Don't, forget. You, you better not daydream or Freddy Krueger will get you or his slightly overweight brother, Teddy Krueger. <laughs> I want to meet Teddy Krueger. Seems like a cool guy. Joanna, where can we find you? I'm on Twitter as Stuff Like Hearts. Okay. And Twitch TV stuff like games. Okay, Ooh. and no other websites. No, no other nothing websites. called. No, yeah, like we don't know what that so is. Bleep yeah. that. Bleep that. Bleep that. No. No, we do not support those degenerate sites. Let me just here. say that I'm a fan of Johanna. No. That's it. That's it. Mm. That's it. That's it. Well, you know, there are other sites that I post oh on. If you look, Tony, I'm hungry. Let's go. If you look up, <laughs> if you look up Hack the Movies on sites uh, that are meant for fans and only for fans. <laughs> we'll find some good stuff uh, there. Stop poking the eye. You keep doing that. It's not real. It doesn't really look. Oh, did you break? <laughs> yeah, but it's okay. Okay. That is it from us. Patreon. Uh, voicemail. Do leave us a voicemail. We haven't done voicemail in a long time. Uh, hit us up. <laughs> uh, we haven't done a voicemail in a long no. time. Uh, check out our other episodes. You definitely want to check out the Friday 13th episodes, our Halloween episodes, and our Leprechaun episodes those are a lot of fun and of course me and my cousin i gotta get back together with her to continue our hellraiser bonus show on patreon uh yes we'll see you next time goodbye they're playing like felicia versus bishamon and if bishamon ends with a certain move you just cut felicia in half did you make sure to see orchid's thong yeah. here's 30 more chances as she spins around see you've got the batgirl shirt on and you're oh. wearing a robin t-shirt batgirl and robin to your batman and Turtles ha is like Star Wars in the, like, Star Wars is a 70s thing that ran into the 80s. Yeah. Turtles started in the 80s, but really grew in the 90s. Yeah. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Check out our other videos and Patreon page. Talk, talking, talking about tapes.